Don in London, it's June 9th. My video is all about recovery from addiction to either substance or behaviour. What follows after a few thoughts from me are the daily reflections over the years which I've made and also uh, a piece on step six of the AA program of recovery. And why am I in recovery? Well, simply I got help how to live life. And Alcoholics Anonymous was the first place where I found a set of principles which seemed to work for me. So, what is AA? You can find out as you go through my videos, plenty of them out there. And one of the statements I always put these days with the ones that, that I do now is this. The AA steps and traditions are neither rules, regulations, nor laws. Perhaps their secret, the secret of their power lies in the fact that these life-giving communications spring out of living experience and are rooted in love. And that comes from a book, AA Comes of Age. And early on I was very lucky to realise that there are no rules, regulations or laws. Simply we learn to live life one day at a time to a set of principles to enable freedom of choice. And I guess that's part of why I am so much in favour of a fellowship which includes people who only have a desire to stop drinking. No other rules, no other laws, no regulations, simply a desire to stop drinking. So my reflections for today slow down to now. Reaction to new situations with old behaviour. The old behaviour, anger, resentment, frustration evoked by current experiences so what I can do if things aren't going my way is find that my old his history comes back into play anger, frustration and resentment and many people say in the fellowship resentments are well anger, no, expectations are resentments under construction old behaviour can overwhelm and distort the present moment take in each new situation Consider how to respond as reality is. In recovery, we find out what we can do and what we can't do. So we have to live life on life's terms. Another one, helicopter views. When we can only see life our own way, we have one view, our own view. When we feel pressure, we feel life more at the extremes. So our feelings and attitudes go to extremes when we're under pressure. And those are, for, for me, defects of character if they can continue la like that and don't fit the present moment. Taking account of others and their point of view in the here and now offers opportunity to be right-sized with ev everyone just for today. And that is all about seeing it through the eyes of others. So if I can see it through the eyes of others and what my part is in life, I do get freedom of choice, either to be included in what other people are doing or to withdraw and find something more useful to do. And that takes faith, courage and confidence that we are not bound up to follow a set of patterns that we think we ought to be doing. But it does take time to make those adjustments. We can't just suddenly become rebellious, otherwise we go to extremes again. So it's making a plan to find out what it is we are best useful doing and something we can enjoy. Another one, letting go and letting good prevail. As I came out of the darkest of times in addiction, it was a slow and steady progress of shrugging off the old outlooks. <clears throat> and for me that meant I had to stop and take, take stock, do a life story, look at the old outlooks and attitudes and personality traits and see what was getting in the way. So no drink, no oblivion, no dread. Paranoia haunted me a, a long while then room to find faith, courage and confidence to live life today. So paranoia did. I was always looking over my shoulder to see if someone was there ready to trip me up and say, oh no, you've got it all wrong. Even though you're not drinking, you're still a fool and an idiot and it's all going to be piled back on you in some guilty, shameful way. Well, once I started to learn what humility is, and that, that is to keep on learning, humility is my biggest asset. If I can keep on learning a day at a time, I don't have to feel guilt or shame because I don't know. Ignorance is not bliss for me. And 
the final one, any time, any place and anywhere. The twelve steps are timeless principles because they never wear out. In other words, in the present moment, all the twelve steps, the toolkit of AA for an individual to find open, honest and willing ways to live, they never wear out, they never let us down and they help us deal with the hard parts of life as well as the good parts of life. The steps are at your service and always work in the moment. How am I feeling? Why? And what can I do today? So, how am I feeling? Why? And what can I do today? is part of my morning meditations now and it's to know my outlook so I can be free to live life on life's terms today. Freedom to be me. And that doesn't mean I'm always going to get my own way, but it gives me an understanding, which I never had before, that I do have freedom of choice around reality. Now, some things in reality I cannot change, because that's just the way they are. There are some hard facts of life, which I just can't change. But around that, I can work out what I'm free to do. And that is where the ultimate happiness is, in finding freedom of choice. And my goals in life have changed dramatically. And the reason for that, well, I did do reasonably well in one or two careers along the way. But what I found was, if I said yes to things which I didn't like doing, but was good at, it meant I got pushed off course. A better course that I could have taken without a drink, and without oblivion, and without fear. Without the need to, to find a way out into a, and an escape into oblivion. I'm very lucky to be alive today to be able to say those things, to be free, and it's down to fellowship in the main, family, friends and community as well, and I, I guess I get my wisdom in life, doing what I do on a daily basis. So always there, the anonymous fellowship, anonymity, a sacrosanct place to find out who you are, the truth of who you are, so you may be yourself and I can be myself as much as I can be and then by the end of the day I will know a little bit more about who I am all good so what follows the daily reflections and one or two other things including step six enough, to, enough for this particular June 9th today Hello, Don in London. It's June 9th. My video is all about recovery from addiction to either substance or behaviour. I share the daily reflections. I speak for myself, not for AA, and I believe people are unique and authentic, making their own path and recovery, one day at a time. So here's the daily reflection from this book, from AA, June 9th, Living in the Now. First, we try living in the now, just in order to stay sober. And it works. Once the idea has become a part of our thinking, we find that living life in 24-hour segments is an effective way, an effective and satisfying way to handle many other matters as well. One day at a time, to a newcomer, this other, this and other one-liners of AA may seem ridiculous. The passwords of the AA fellowship can become lifelines in moments of stress. Each day can be like a rose unfurling according to the plan of a power greater than myself. My program should be planted in the, light, in the right location, just as it will need to be groomed, nourished and protected from disease. My planting will require patience and my realising that some flowers will be more perfect than others. Each stage of the petals unfolding can bring wonder and delight if I do not interfere or let my expectations override my acceptance and this brings serenity. So for me, I've got to watch my expectations. If I expect things to be a certain way, it gets in the way of reality and it can confound me. So what happens when I'm in those states? Serenity prayer helps me any day, every day, as many times as I need. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference is simply for today.
Don in London, hello, and it's 10th of June 2009. My, re my video is all about recovery from addiction to either substance or behaviour, and uh, I'm recovering one day at a time. I need to remind myself always about this, that I'm in recovery one day only. My life goes on, uh, the days seem to speed up as I get older, I don't know if that's a common trait, I suspect it is, but with a and a clear head, or as clear as it can be, without the befuddlement of, addi of addiction. My addiction was alcohol, uh, and behaviour which was self-obsessed and going round and round in circles, trying to be perfect, either at work or doing the gym or being in relationships. You name it, I tried to strive for perfection, and these days I'm striving to learn who I am. And I'm glad about that, because it means I'm human, very human indeed. So what helps me keep sober? Well, family do, community, society, civilization as we know it, uh, as they say on Star Trek, uh, whatever life is, we don't know what it is, but it's life as we, it's not as we know it. And that's simply me learning a day at a time. I don't know, I think I was ignorant of my, about my situation for a long, long time. For us to actually understand addiction, we have to actually maybe experience it, because if you're not an addict, why on earth would you want to know? And that's where some of the stigma, if you like, the self-prejudice about addiction is. So first we, we want never to know that we are an addict, probably, remaining ignorant probably till death, and then thinking, well, well, I don't know what we think or feel when we're dead, but on the way there, there's great despair, desolation and disappointment in addiction, and uh, I suffered that quite a lot. And this self-prejudice kept me away from recovery for a long, long time because I just didn't think I was good enough. I had clinical depression and a whole range of other behavioral problems to do with just trying to stay, well, stay on the planet, basically. And I cannot remember the number of times I did not want to wake up. Not actively commit suicide, but certainly I didn't want to wake up. So it's the soft option, if you like, for addicted people uh, not to have to think or feel any more. So to get into recovery is rather a difficult task and for those who do uh, it remains a day at a time exercise and the Fellowship of AA Alcoholics Anonymous helps me daily connect with people who understand what it's like to stay in recovery because we share our experience, strength and hope. And I go to AA meetings, uh, Alcoholics Anonymous, Anonymous meetings here in London and there are 720 a week apparently. So, as I used to drink most days, <coughs> most days I go to AA, and for an hour or an hour and a half I get to hear what other people are doing with their lives, and I can share as well what I'm doing with my life. I don't share about these videos because they're nothing to do with AA, and uh, AA is full of unique authentic people, so I cannot speak for them, nor would I want to, and I don't speak for AA either, I just talk about how it helps me on a daily basis. But the preamble which is shared at every meeting I go to at the beginning helps a new person and the oldest person in sobriety there in the room because we need to be brought into the same place, the same place of understanding in the here and now. Uh, sometimes called the spiritual, spiritual connection is reality without filters or denials. So what does AA say about itself in the preamble? It says this, Alcoholics Anonymous is a fellowship of men and women who share their experience, strength and hope with each other that they may solve their common problem and help others to recover from alcoholism. The only requirement for membership is a desire to stop drinking. There are no dues or fees for AA membership. We are self-supporting through our own contributions. AA is not allied with any sect, denomination, politics, organisation or institution. Does not wish to engage in any controversy. Neither endorses nor opposes any causes. Our primary purpose is to stay sober and help other alcoholics to achieve sobriety. And the reason I say that every time on uh, my videos is, so if, when people take them out of sequence, they know where I'm coming from. I'm talking about my experience, strength and hope, which is based on fellowship life, if you like, and having a life outside fellowship. So if one hour in 24 is devoted to keeping in recovery, and then the other 23, well, I'm lucky because I don't drink a day at a time. And that's the gift. It's the gift of life. And uh, for me, Lots of things are happening, and um, connections to old friends because of YouTube and uh, Facebook, which is quite startling, and also um, 
disconnection sometimes because it's just the way life is. So sometimes life is going all right and sometimes it's not and sometimes we upset people unintentionally. And uh, I guess for many years I was doing that by my drinking behaviour. First I was upset because life just didn't seem worth living. And then the rest of the world, whoever knew me, would see the perfect person who kept everybody out, out from the real me inside. And the real me inside was a very small boy who didn't really understand life too well and had never grown up and feared a lot of things, always wondering what would be around the next corner and always feeling like I needed to look over my shoulder for the people with the knives to stab me in the back. I don't know if it was quite that paranoid all the time, but there were some good times in there too, otherwise I wouldn't have done it, would I? So in the fellowship we have uh, literature like this, daily reflections, and uh, I'll try and cover what it says in these. AA has a 12-step program, and in the daily reflections it covers one step per month, and the 12 steps are about uh, taking adopting a new attitude to life and new behaviour so getting rid of the old attitude of poor old me uh, less than don't want to live more of a bit of courage faith and confidence that life can work out and it can be interesting and I can be connected that's what the 12 steps help me do and it's when it's an action program we don't follow it dogmatically to some other person's uh, tune if you like or their way of looking at the world we find our own outlook and how the 12 steps help us authentically and uniquely to be ourselves. So it says here, June 10th, um, this is the sixth month, and the sixth step is all about sorting out where, where we need to develop better attitudes and behavior, which we can utilize, and uh, not relying on self-will, self-obsession. So it says here, impatient, question mark, try levitating. We reacted more strongly to frustrations than normal people. Impatience with other people is one of my principal failings, following a slow car in a no passing lane or waiting in a restaurant for a check drives me to distraction before I give God a chance or good conscience or the world to sh slow me down I explode and that's what I call being quicker than God that repeat repeated experience gave me an idea I thought if I could look down on these events from God's point of view it's like a helicopter view I might better control my feelings and behaviour because that means I'm right size because everybody's wanted to get their check and pass and all the rest of it I tried it and when I encountered the next slow driver, I levitated and looked down on the other car and upon myself. I saw an elderly couple driving along, happily chatting about their grandchildren. They were followed by me, bug-eyed and red of face, who had no time schedule to meet anyway. I looked so silly that I dropped back into reality and slowed down. Seeing things from God's angle of vision can be very relaxing. Or from my bicycle on the King's Road when uh, a motorist uh, drives right up to the very edge where the, light, the lights are red so that the pedestrians cannot pass and uh, somebody knocked on their window yesterday and said why don't you move back and the driver looked as if they were horrified how dare they and this lady had a pram with a child in it and very sensibly she pulled, went back to the edge and uh, onto the sidewalk or pavement and uh, let it go but the driver in the car zoomed off as fast as they could as the lights were just going to amber you know what people really are very impatient when there's nothing to rush at except another bloody car queue and <coughs> one of my favourite pictures which I took in the King's Road is this one and you know it sums up a lot uh, a fairly ancient couple a man just walking behind his wife I suspect because they look very similar in their outfit, outfits and it's, the reason why it's one of my favourite pictures is it says to me the lady's saying come on you old goat get on with it and um, you know I think a lot of people are told about life pull yourself up, um, put on a brave face and get on with it and don't be such a wimp around things to do with addiction but because if you, if you don't know what addiction is and you don't understand it as a disease and an ailment which is trying to kill us and self prejudice runs riot you know we put ourselves down and I've heard it said in many occasions that I would never go out with somebody in the fellowship because they're mad. Well, at least sanity is restored on a daily basis if we're lucky. And, you know, for me today, I'm just gently trying to understand how life works. And that try levitating bit, which is looking at the whole situation, not just mine. It, it suggests it's God's view, but in fact it's a good conscience view. So when I say the serenity prayer, God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can. I guess it's really 
wisdom in the moment and knowing the difference. Don in London, good morning. And it's June 9th, 2008. And uh, it's been a good weekend, actually. And I feel like I'm a bit clogged up this morning with all sorts of experiences and probably not enough sleep, but a good sleep all the same. And this is all about living in the day, uh, or a day in the life of Don, really. And I've been doing this for some time, over a year, on and off. Uh, a few breaks, some because I needed them, and some because I ran out of uh, equipment to do these videos, or the, video, the uh, equipment packed up on me. Anyway, I seem to be fully functional in terms of equipment. I'm not sure I'm so fully functional in terms of my outlook. In the sense of, it's just probably sleep deprived to an extent. Because when you're trying to pack up everything you can possibly do into a day, uh, sometimes we overreach ourselves and we're trying to operate at over 100%. And for me, that's not good. Because I do need to be careful that I don't overdo it. And create an imbalance between my emotional well-being, my spiritual well-being and my physical well-being. And if I don't take account of what's going on for me with the physical side, when I've got type 1 diabetes, uh, with all quite a raft of complications at the present time, then I can make my life quite miserable. So it's important that I tell people what's going on and share it, and make sure that my friends in my fellowship help me. And this is all about uh, keeping in recovery from addiction. And I don't know that you can discern between alcohol and other drugs or behaviour. So addiction falls into two categories basically. One is substance addiction and the other is behavioural addiction. So we can be addicted to certain types of behaviour and substances and we may have a raft of things going on all, all at the same time. What I found and what I shared sometime last week was that uh, if you can find a fellowship or some way of finding recovery from whatever it is that's been bugging you in terms of addictive behaviour, but those things you can't stop doing, or I couldn't stop doing, then stick with one set of principles as the primary source of recovery. Otherwise, what happens is we start to diffuse and dilute what we're trying to do. And especially with 12-step 12, 12 fellowships, there seems to be a 12-step fellowship for just about anything to do with any substance and any behaviour. So the gift is to find the right one for you, or me, and work with one of them so we can get into the deep of what's going on for us, rather than being superficial. Because if we are superficial in our recovery, we'll soon get found out, try and snatch back our willpower, and try and do it on our own again. And of course addiction likes a lonely person. Isolation is the best way of going back to whatever, whatever behaviour or whatever substance was doing the trick, and then didn't anymore. And the reasons why we find recovery is whatever it is that we've become addicted to is probably killing us and shutting out the rest of the world from our outlook. So outlook is really important. And this weekend has been absolutely magnificent. It's been in the company of uh, a very beautiful woman, uh, my girlfriend. And I'm, I'm really glad to be able to say that simply because it's been a long time since I've been in a relationship. And we have our hiccups and self-doubts about is this right? What we, what we may do and what we can't do? And the answer is, we don't know whether something is right until we've been doing it long enough, but not in an addictive way. And, you know, we can become dependent very easily on other, other things, because that's the nature of who we are. Interdependence is fine, but codependence, where power re is retained by one person over another, is certainly not a good idea. So all sorts of things going on for me, <coughs> and I'm just trying to make the best of it one day at a time. Anyway, the principle of why does Alcoholics Anonymous work for me, I'll give you the preamble. Alcoholics Anonymous is a fellowship of men and women who share their experience, strength and hope with each other, that they may solve their common problem and help others to recover from alcoholism. The only requirement for membership is a desire to stop drinking. There are no dues or fees for AA membership. We are self-supporting through our own contributions. AA is not allied with any sect, denomination, politics, organisation or institution. Does not wish to engage in any does not wish to engage in any controversy. Neither opposes nor or neither, uh, 
Some mornings is a bit difficult. Neither endorses nor opposes any causes. Our primary purpose is to stay sober and help other alcoholics to achieve sobriety. So there you are, falteringly through the, the preamble. And the fellowship did save my life and continues to do that on a daily basis because I look to emotional, spiritual, and physical well-being. And the reason why I mention AA, my primary addiction throughout all of this is probably alcohol, or alcohol is behind most of it. And when it comes to other activities like workaholism, people-isms, I guess I had those as well. And also an addiction to health, uh, and going to the gym for many years, in the, in the 90s, all the way through to 2002, when I ran out of money completely and became so, somewhat destitute. So, what do I know? Stick with one, stick with one thing, or one type of understanding about where we can apply our recovery. And I use the, uh, reflect the literature of AA to share here about what's going on and how to make the most of a day. And if we have some framework of thinking and understanding about what we're doing, we have a better chance of keeping on the straight and narrow. Because the, the, the trouble is, if we take away some of the addictions, then we realize a lot of behavior is not a good idea. So it's straight and narrow is what it is. Daily Reflections, June 9th, living in the now. First, we try living in the, in the now just in order to stay sober, and it works. Once the idea has become a part of our thinking, and our feeling in my case, we find that living life in 24 hour segments is an effective and satisfying way to handle many other matters as well. It goes on to say, one day at a time. To a newcomer, this and other one-liners of AA may seem ridiculous. The, password of the, AA fellowship, uh, the passwords of the AA fellowship can become lifelines in moment, moments of stress. Each day can be like a rose unfurling, according to the plan of a power greater than myself. My program should be planted in the right location, just as it will need to be groomed, nourished and protected from disease. My planting will, will require patience and my realising that some flowers will be more perfect than others. Each stage of the petals unfolding can bring wonder and delight if I do not interfere or let my expectations override my acceptance. And this brings serenity. And it comes back to the... Uh, the exhortation to God or good conscious, conscience with the serenity prayer, which goes, God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and wisdom to know the difference. So you can either be secular in your recovery, not needing a God, but certainly needing a power greater than others. And for me, the rooms of AA, and as Gandhi said, God is truth, God, uh, God is love. And whatever our concept of the higher power or God, is what works for us. So six and a half billion people on the planet, six and a half billion definitions which are probably working quite well for those who are still alive. And, you know, is that such a, a bad thing? I think not, because it means we have an understanding of how good conscience works and relates to the world in a more spiritual way, living in the moment or living in the now. So important. And nobody can be a bigger spiritual person than anybody else, is, is what I've learned. We just get better at doing our meditations and making ourselves able to experience what is in front of us rather than imagining what it could be or might be in the future or harking back to the past where it's already gone. So, page 165 from As Bill Sees It. Success in 12th stepping. We now see that in 12th stepping the immediate results are not so important. Some people start, up, start out working with others and have immediate success. They are likely to get cocky. Those of us who are not so successful at first get depressed. And this is all about sharing the message with another alcoholic. It goes on to say, as a matter of fact, the, su the successful worker differs from the unsuccessful only in, bringing lucky, only in being lucky about his prospects. He simply hits newcomers who are ready and able to stop at once. Given the same prospects, the seemingly unsuccessful person would have produced almost the same results. You have to work on a lot of newcomers before the law of averages commences to assert itself. All true communication must be found on mutual need. We saw that each sponsor would have to admit humbly his own needs as clearly as those of his prospect, which is indeed a levelling of understanding. And I was a bad prospect. It took me a long time to get the message of a, a fellowship who might help me, not control me, give me back my choices, not tell me what to do, and just make one day at a time. How special is that? Just gently going along with the day.
my time is nearly up. So I may do more later. Don in London, hello. My video is all about recovery from addiction to either substance or behaviour. My addictive substance, alcohol, my behaviour equally addictive around people, places and things. So these days, sober one day at a time. And that's what seems to work. Live in the day, live in the moment. Find my spiritual connection to living in the, in the moment of now. Spiritual life is real life. Everything is spiritual. So all those 35 years of drinking were spiritual and what follows on one day at a time is also spiritual. I suppose really the question is for anyone, what quality of spiritual do we enjoy best? And only a person can make up their own mind what is best for them. So I share about what helped me into recovery and to be sober one day at a time with the help and aid of fellowship, that fellowship is AA. And today I just want to read from this book, Twelve Steps and Twelve Traditions, which is the backbone I guess of much of what the fellowship is about. Twelve steps so we can live well, open, honest and willing. And the twelve traditions in fellowship, unity, service and recovery. Sounds like the dog downstairs is not having a good time. So what is AA? I just share off the preamble which is on this little card which explains to anyone what the fellowship is there to do to include people around being sober one day at a time and living a spiritual life knowing what our feelings are and not drinking. So what is AA? Alcoholics Anonymous is a fellowship of men and women who share their experience, strength and hope with each other that they may solve their common problem and help others to recover from alcoholism. The only requirement for membership is a desire to stop drinking. There are no dues or fees for AA membership. We are self-supporting through our own contributions. AA is not allied with any sect, denomination, politics, organisation or institution. Does not wish to engage in any controversy, neither endorses nor opposes any causes. Our primary purpose is to stay sober and help other alcoholics to achieve sobriety. So it's all about being included. The only requirement for membership is a desire to stop drinking. And what you make of your life with the help of fellowship and the 12 steps and the 12 traditions and the big book of AA and how you come to live life is as it works for you as an individual because we are all unique and authentic on our life path as we are. So we try not to tell each other what to do. But there are some principles involved, and the principles in the 12 steps and 12 tradi traditions help us to find a sober life. And uh, June, for me, is all about step six. So I share the step, and also a commentary about how it works for me. And step six, it says here, we were ready or rather were entirely ready to have God remove all these defects of character. So what are defects and what are assets or what are our liabilities and what are our assets? Well, it probably boils down to the, in the biblical sense, the seven, si deadly, seven deadly sins and also the seven virtues, the opposite. And if you look on the internet you'll find many version and here's just a version which I picked up quite quickly right so pride is excessive belief in one's own abilities that interferes with the individual's recognition of the grace of God it has been called the sin from which all others arise pride is also known as vanity so pride is the first deadly sin or defect Envy is the desire for others, traits, status, abilities or situation. Gluttony, the third one, is an inordinate desire to consume more than, one, than, more than that which one requires. Lust is an inordinate craving for the pleasures of the body. Anger is manifested in the individual who spurns love and opts instead for fury. It is also known as wrath, 
wrath or wrath. Sloth is the avoidance of physical or spiritual work. And the opposite, if you like, the seven contrary virtues. Humility, kindness, abstinence, chastity, patience, liberality, diligence. And the contrary virtues were derived from the battle for uh, the, the poem, an epic poem written by Prudentius, circa 410 AD. An epic poem written. Practicing these virtues is alleged to protect one against temptation toward the seven deadly sins. Humility against pride, kindness against envy, abstinence against gluttony, chastity against lust, patience against anger, liberality against greed, and diligence against sloth. So, very black and white, you're either one or the other. But in real life, what are we? We're all of those things at different times in our lives. And although the seven deadly sins and the seven virtues may sound quite old-fashioned, we all have some sort of traits around those issues. And the twelve steps of the fellowship try to address this in, in the way I understand it, in step six and step seven. So step six is all about my defects of character, and step seven is all about my shortcomings. So my defects of character are the sins, and my shortcomings are not enough of the virtues, short on virtue. But in there somewhere is modern life, and life as it is today, and the changing values of society. But around that is a personal code. So these 12 steps, principles, these 12 steps are about developing our own personal code of living. And how we do that is entirely up to us. No one's going to stop us doing it another way. And if they were trying to stop us, our sins or deadly sins of pride would get in the way. We get stubborn and defiant often, or I did. So, step six in the fellowship program reads as this, with a bit of commentary from me. And don't forget, this is just a personal understanding. It's your understanding in the end which counts. And where do you get your personal understanding? from life and also listening to the many voices in society and probably in the fellowship of AA if you stick around long enough. So we're entirely ready to have God remove all these defects of character. This is the step that separates the men from the boys or the women from the girls. So de declares a well-loved clergyman who happens to be one of AA's greatest friends. He goes on to explain that any person capable of enough willingness and honesty to try repeatedly step six yes he goes on to explain that any person capable of enough willingness and honesty to try repeatedly step six on all his, his faults without any reservations whatever has indeed come a long way spiritually and is therefore entitled to be called a man who is sincerely trying to grow in the image and likeness of his own creator and again, don't get hung up on Creator. It's the God of your understanding, or a power greater than you, which counts in this. The common good often is used or utilised. Of course, the often disputed question of whether God can and will, under certain, certain conditions, remove defects of character will be answered with a prompt affirmative by almost any AA member. To him, this proposition will be no theory at all. It will be just about the largest fact in his life. He will usually offer his proof in a statement like this. Sure, I was beaten, absolutely licked. My own willpower just wouldn't work on alcohol. Change of scene, the best efforts of family, friends, doctors and clergymen got no place with my alcoholism. I simply couldn't stop drinking, and no human being could seem to do the job for me. But when I became willing to clean house, that's step four and then as to a higher power God as I understand him to give me release my obsessions to drink vanished he was lifted right out of me well it didn't quite work that way because I was a stubborn son of a gun and I thought I knew better for a long time but when I got to fellowship I found there were a lot of people who had given up on pride and said self will will run riot and willpower will fail 
and it was right. So I listened to the many voices. Whereas if God works through people, the wisdom came quick and easy for me. So I stuck around for quite a while, shivering with, with fear, another one of my defects, until I could keep on listening to what was working for other people, and then I started to learn. In AA meetings all over the world, statements just like this are heard daily. It is plain for everybody to see that each sober AA member has been granted a release from this very obstinate and potentially fatal obsession. So in a very complete and literal way, all AAs have become entirely ready to have God remove the mania for alcohol from their lives, and God has pr proceeded to do exactly that. And I would add to that, as long as I keep on asking for help on a daily basis, and listening and learning from others how to live life beyond, beyond just stopping drinking, then my defects of character seem to diminish Personality traits don't go away completely, they just don't. But if we ask on a daily basis, at least we have a, a good chance that we will operate more to our virtues than our defects. When men and women pour so much alcohol into themselves that they destroy their lives, they commit a most unnatural act. Defying their instinctive desire for self-preservation, they seem bent upon self-destruction. They work against their best their own deepest instinct. As they are humbled by the terrific beating administered by alcohol, the grace of God can enter them and expel their obsession. And uh, I guess the grace of God for me is keeping on learning, and as it says, humility, kindness, abstinence, chastity, patience, liber liberality and diligence. So working on sober rather than working on the next drink. Here, their powerful instinct to live can cooperate fully with their creator's desires to give them new life, for nature and God alike abhor suicide. But most of our other difficulties don't fall under such a category at all. Every normal person wants, for example, to eat, to reprodu reproduce, to be somebody in society, in the society of his fellows, and he wishes to be reasonably safe and secure as he tries to attain these things. Indeed, God made him that way. He did not design man to destroy himself by alcohol, but he did give, him, give man instincts to help him stay alive. It is nowhere evidence, evident, at least in this life, that our Creator expects us to fully eliminate our instinctive drives. Indeed, that would be foolish to think that. So far as we know, it is nowhere on record that God has completely removed from any human being all his natural drives. Indeed, that would be unnatural. Since most of us are born with an abundance of natural desires, it isn't strange that we often let these far exceed their intended purpose. And that's to do with our thinking and, and our vices, I guess. When they drive us blindly, or we willfully demand that they supply us with more satisfactions or pleasures than are possible or due to us, that is the point at which we depart from the degree of perfection that God wishes for us here on earth, or as nature intended. That is the measure of our character defects, or if you wish, our sins. If we ask, God will certainly forgive all our derelictions, but in no case does he render us as white as snow and keep us that way without our co cooperation. That is something we are supposed to be willing to work towards ourselves. He asks only that we try as best we know how to make progress in the building of character. So indeed it is about building of character. And if we think about our youth, where all our instincts and drives and desires were out of control as we came into adulthood, and then we find that we had to live in a society where we had to live to the norms, and of course drink is not one of them to excess and then addiction. But of course every other behaviour can be in that addiction too, as many have found. So step six, we're entirely ready to have God remove all these defects of character, is AA's way of stating the best possible attitude one can take in order to make a beginning on this lifetime job. In other words, to find balance in our natural drives and living, so that we can be included in society. This does not mean that we expect all of our char yes, character defects to be lifted out of us as the drive to drink was. 
A few of them may be, but with most of them we shall have to be content with patient improvement. And that's the game, progress not perfect. Because if we try to be perfect from day one, we would fail. We, we would be back on pride and self-will. The key words, entirely ready, underline the fact that we want to aim at the very best we know or can learn. How many of us have this degree of readiness? In an absolute sense, practically nobody has it. The best we can do, with all honesty that, can, that we can summon, is to try to have it. Even then, the best of us will discover, to our dismay, that there is always a sticking point, a point at which we say, no, I can't give this up yet. And we shall often tread on even more dangerous ground when we cry, this I will never give up. Such is the power of our instincts to overreach themselves. No matter how far we have progressed, desires will always be found which oppose the grace of God, or, as some say, nature and providence, as we've got to where we are in our nature, and providence, that is, as the world is today. Some who feel they have done but well may dispute this, so let's try to think about it a little further. Practically everybody wishes to be rid of his most glaring and destructive handicaps. No one wants to be so proud that he is scorned as a braggart, nor so greedy that he is labelled a thief. No one wants to be angry enough to murder, lustful enough to rape, gluttonous enough to ruin his health. No one wants to be agonised by the chronic pain of envy, or to be paralysed by sloth. Of course, most human beings don't suffer these defects at, defects at these rock-bottom levels. We who have escaped these extremes are apt to congratulate ourselves, yet can we? After all, hasn't it been self-interest, pure and simple, that has enabled us, most of us to escape? Not much spiritual effort is involved in avoiding excesses which will bring us punishment anyway, but when we face up to the less violent aspects of these very same defects, then where do we stand? And this is where it's about you and your, you and your understanding of life however it turns out to be. What we must recognise now is that we exalt in some of our defects. We really love them. Who, for example, doesn't like to feel just a little superior to the next fellow, or even quite a lot superior? Isn't it true that we like to let greed masquerade as ambition? To think of liking lust seems impossible. But how many men and women speak love with their lips and believe what they say? so that they can hide lust in a dark corner of their minds. And even while staying within conventional bounds, many people have to admit that their imaginary sex excursions are apt to be all dressed up as dreams of romance. Indeed, we can talk ourselves into anything. I know this. I've done it. Self-righteous anger also can be very enjoyable. In a perverse way, we can actually take satisfaction from the fact that many people annoy us for it brings a comfortable feeling of superiority. Gossip barbed with our anger, and I'm right, I'm smiling there, because it's very easy to become self-righteous in recovery. I mean, the simple answer is, the more self-righteous we are, the more we are dogmatic, the more we are stubborn de and defiant about something we believe there is one path, and it happens to be mine. And what I've learned in recovery, my path, if I stick with it defiantly and stubbornly, I'll start to stumble and fall down pretty darn quickly because I need the input and in inclusion of everyone in my life. Gossip bound with our anger, a polite form of murder by character assassination, has its satisfactions for us too. Here we are not trying to help those we criticise, we are trying to proclaim our own righteousness and uh, <coughs> I know this from things which have happened today. Self-righteousness doesn't do me or anybody else any good. But if you point it out to another person that they're being self-righteous, am I not also being self-righteous? Because I'm developing the argument. So sometimes uh, in the fellowship we say desist of pen and tongue because there is nothing to add and nothing to be gained by it. Even though we like to do it, and to an extent I can do it too, even now. And then I think to myself, I must laugh at myself and stop it, because I don't know what is right for you. And if I don't know what's right for you, how do I know what's right for me? Which is why I always say I need to keep on learning. 
When gluttony is less than ruinous, we have a milder word for that too. We call it taking our comfort. We live in a world riddled with envy to a greater or lesser degree. Everybody is infected with it. From this defect we must surely get a warped yet definite satisfaction. Else why would we consume such great amounts of time wishing for what we have not, rather than working for it, or angrily looking for attributes we shall never have, instead of adjusting to the fact and accepting it? And how often we work hard with no better motive than to be secure and slothful later on. Only we call it only we call that retiring. Consider too our talents for procrastination, which is really sloth in five syllables. Nearly anyone can make a good list of the of such defects as these, and few of us would be ser would seriously think of giving them up, at least until they cause us excessive misery. And without a doubt if we go hell for leather in one direction thinking we're right and we wonder why nobody's following us we do get somewhat alienated and, and messed up but if we don't stop giving up those ideas that we're always right or that my way or the highway is the right way then we are alone again and isolated and we may not drink but we're certainly not as sober as we could be some people, of course, may conclude that they are indeed ready to have all such defects taken from them, but even these people, if they construct a list of still milder defects, will be obliged to admit that they prefer to hang on to some of them. Therefore it seems plain that few of us can quickly or easily become ready to aim at spiritual and moral perfection. We want to settle for only as much perfection as, it will, as will get us by in life, according, of course, to our various and sundry ideas are what will get us by. So the difference between the boys and the men is the difference between striving for a self-determined objective and for the per perfect objective which is God, of God. Yeah, so we progress and are not perfect. We realise some of our potential, but our defects of character will get in the way if they remain out of balance and we hang on to them. Many, many will ask at once ask, how can we accept the entire implication of step six? Why? That is perfection. This sounds like a hard question but practically speaking it isn't. Only step one where we made the 100% admission we were powerless over alcohol can be practiced with absolute perfection. The remaining 11 steps state perfect ideals so perfect ideals so strict adherence to the steps is about perfect ideals but you know strict adherence on a daily basis life is happening around us and we're going to be pushed and pulled in all sorts of ways so defects as well as virtues will be around there are goals towards which we look and the measuring sticks by which we estimate our progress seen in this light step six is still difficult but not at all impossible the only urgent thing is that we make a beginning and keep trying. And that's it. We make a beginning and keep trying. So contingent on the day we ask for help and refocus ourselves around the virtues. Humility, kindness, abstinence, chastity, patience, liberality and diligence. We are on a better wicket, if you like, if you're a cricketer. If we would gain any real advantage in the use of this, step on problems other than alcohol, we shall need to make a brand new venture into open-mindedness. We shall need to raise our eyes towards perfection and be ready to walk in that direction. It will seldom matter how haltingly we walk. The only question will be, are we ready? So contingent on the day we ask, are we ready to let go righteousness and every other excessive excessive outlook or personality trait are we ready and the only answer is yes really or if, you're, if we are stubborn and, and defiant and angry the answer may be no so we keep on trying looking again at those defects we are still unwilling to give up we ought to erase the hard and fast lines that we have drawn perhaps we shall be obliged in some cases still to say this I cannot give up yet but we should not say to ourselves that I will never give up 
let's dispose of what happen appears to be a hazardous open end we have left. It is suggested that we ought to become entirely willing to aim towards perfection. We know that some delay, however, might be pardoned. That word in the mind of a rationalising alcoholic could, con could certainly be given a long-term meaning. He could say, how very easy. Sure, I'll head towards perfection, but I'm certainly not going to hurry. Maybe I can postpone dealing with some of my problems indefinitely. Of course, this won't do. Such a bluffing of oneself will have to go the way of many another pleasant rationalisation. At the very least, we shall have to come to grips with some of our worst character defects and take action towards their removal as quickly as possible. A well, complete understanding that defects of character can come up in any moment of the day if we are provoked, or we provoke others. The moment we say no never, our minds close against the grace of God, or common sense. After all, what else would God's word be beyond common sense and wisdom for the common man? We're not talking rocket science here, we're talking common sense. Delay is dangerous and rebellion may be fatal. This is the exact point at which we abandon limited objective and move towards God's will for us, as nature intended, nature and providence. All these wonderful words, and I like because... You know, spiritual is now. Spiritual is in the moment. It's not tomorrow and it's not yesterday. Although every experience we've had brings us to this spiritual moment of now. And either we accept life on life's terms, acceptance is the key always, or we get into trouble again. And it's being defiant or angry against our situation often. That life isn't giving us what we think we deserve. So just a reminder, the contrary virtues were derived as follows yeah. humility against pride kindness against envy abstinence against gluttony chastity against lust patience against anger liberality against greed and diligence against sloth and step six the seven deadly sins or removal of them is subject to asking on a daily basis how am I going to live today how do I want to behave how do I want to be open honest and willing to change my attitude and behavior to fit my circumstances and do my feelings fit my life right now if we've been good in our step four life story and expressed it and shared it with another human being and to our creator as we choose then step six defects fall out of that life story quite easily and also our shortcomings, the virtues, which is all about step seven. I don't know that we can take six and seven in isolation. I can have a step six day full of defects of character if I'm stubborn and defiant and go back to my old behavior. Or I can have a better day with a bit of courage, faith, confidence around humility, kindness, abstinence, chastity, patience, liberality, and diligence. And I'm a slow learner, and often have been a poor student in the past. I was criticised deeply by someone when they, I said I was a poor student in the past, or I could be a poor student, and it was pounced upon as a defect. It's a defect to keep on point, pointing it out. My defect would be not to say it, if you get my drift. So these are my views and understandings of step, step six and seven so how does it work for me on a daily basis well in the morning I say how am I feeling why and what can I do and if I feel okay given my current situation my feelings fit my, my experience right now then life is understandable and comprehensible I can, I can get on with it but if my feelings don't fit my current reality, my feelings are over the top in some way, in a particular direction of those defects or sins, or well, my virtues are without foundation, courage, faith and confidence, over elated. I need to ask myself, why am I feeling this way? and that's not to actually analyse to death how am I feeling, why and what can I do is a very great starting point I don't know how I feel right now, why? because I haven't given it, I haven't given it a second thought 
What can I do? Consider my options today. Or if I wake up angry, fearful, resentful, or just feeling like I can't cope or I don't know what to do, then I need a bit more courage, faith and confidence. And I often get that by ringing somebody up or making contact with another human being. Not necessarily in fellowship, but somebody who I love and loves me back. And that's unconditional love. It's not dependent on anything else other than love to and from people who care. Something my father said. He wished he had cherished my mother more and been less superficial and indifferent. And I think that sums it up. Cherish always and less superficial and less indifferent. And the only way I can be that way is to understand my own life and how I relate to other people. So the steps work for me daily because in mind and in meditation it's about what is the next right thing for everyone inclusively and not just me so I'm merely a player and I'm not the chief critic anymore I hope although I will be chief critic in my own life often and sometimes flail at others and be critical but it does me no good and it does them no good step six June, step 7 July. I can have a bit of both in each day. I can have a, a fairly bad start or a fairly good start. Enough courage, faith and confidence to keep on going or I could have fear, brave facing and ego in my heart. It's as life is and it's often better if I talk to another human being or get to a fellowship meeting where I can see what is working for others so I can join in and be a part of again. Freedom to choose life. Life on life's terms, always a unique and authentic path for each person. And in fellowship with one similarity, a desire to be sober today. The Serenity Prayer is where I finish all my videos, hopefully, to do with recovery, without the screeching of the police cars going past. On Gracious me, a typical London night where I live. Anyway, serenity prayer. Yes, I even sleep through all of that during the night, often, and then get told about it by my neighbours. So, to God, all in good conscience, the serenity prayer is as follows. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference for me is just for today.